Robert. His name was Robert, but he went by Bob all the time. What do you think he thinks about all this? I hope he's looking down, smiling that, you know, we want to keep his memory alive. This all happened, I got a call from a woman named Marcy. Um, she seemed very excited, uh, being that she says that she was looking for a carver, uh, a chainsaw carver, particularly, uh, to carve a large tree in front of her house. And it had been over a year, and she was unable to get anybody to commit to the job. My husband uh, was in the Air Force when we met. He was a master uh, instructor for photography and we ended up getting to travel. We lived four years in Germany. I actually got to live in Thailand with him during the Vietnam War. He was the father of three children and he spent all 20 years in the military and then after he retired from the military he went to work for uh, Bill Smith Studios here in Sacramento and then after that he went to work for the state. He started working for Parks and Rec and I think that had a lot to do with him developing this great love for bears. And he started collecting bears everywhere we went. He had them all over his office and uh, he was very patriotic. You know, he, he loved his country. He always flew a flag at our home. We have one out front now. Unfortunately, he retired in February and passed away in August. So he didn't get to enjoy his retirement very long. My grandpa, like, like I love him a lot, but but deep in my heart, I really miss him. He always been with me all the time. We had a big beautiful tree in the front yard and it started causing trouble. <laughs> the kids finally talked me into cutting it down, but I couldn't give the whole tree up. And so I had the idea to have something carved in it, mainly bears or, or an eagle to represent, you know, my husband's love for that, kind of like a, a, a memorial to him. I'd been looking for carvers for over a year. I'd gone online, um, and the only carvers that would respond to me were like on the East Coast or in the South, and you know, I thought, well, I guess this was just a bad idea. I'm not gonna be able to, you know, really do anything. And then my air conditioner broke down. Just so happened she was getting her air conditioner replaced and had mentioned it to the gentleman who was doing the repair work or replacement work, and he says, oh, just a minute, and pulls out a card that has on it, I do carve, chainsaw carver, and she couldn't believe it. I don't even know what made me do it out of the blue. I go, you don't happen to know a carver, do you? And he looked at me kind of funny, and he goes, and he opened up his book and pulled out this card, and that's how I met Chengo. So she calls me, and she was real excited and was telling me that she, she felt desperately in need to have this tree carved in respects to her past husband. He's right here in Elk Grove. Why I didn't find him before, <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow. And so, I mean, you know, it's just, now it's all come together and I'm really excited. He's, he's such uh, a reverent soul. You know, he's, he's really wonderful to talk to. You just fall in love with him immediately. You feel like you've known him forever. And so I'm really excited to see what's going to come out from this. I don't think anybody really, really knew what I was going to do because I only shared it with my son who lives down the street. But the neighbor next door, she's always looking, you know, and watching, and I'm sure we'll see her out there today watching because she's always wanting to know what's going on over here. And, uh, and the guy across the street's very interested, of course, because that's what he does for a living as far as cutting trees down. But when I told him I was going to have a carver come on, he's going, <laughs> really? You know, it's like they never heard of anything like that around here. You know, in Tahoe, you see a lot of this stuff, you know, it's common, but not down here. <laughs> she sent me pictures, I seen what she had. I told her, yes, there's something I can do with that. I says, but now uh, I need to come look at the tree. I 
I need to feel it, okay? My original vision was to have like a mama bear, papa bear, and babies, okay? But there's just not enough tree <laughs> that takes a lot more. She had wanted something carved that she knows he would have enjoyed. It just so happens, um, after viewing the wood, uh, it took a little bit for me to get settled in on it, but I had figured on creating uh, some perched eagles and a bear particularly. You know, Marcy particularly was strong about the bear. I guess that was his greatest liking. After Chango and I talked and discussed it, and, and you know, he looked at the tree, he goes, well, we'll definitely get a bear for you. And because of the military and, and my husband's love of his country and my love of eagles, you know, I, I asked him if there was any way we could incorporate an eagle. Even though the tree looked, looked large, it was large, but it was broken off into many different sections. Yes, I had concerns because I was thinking what would work and fit together. And so, yes, it, it had my brain working for some time, you know. And, but I tell you, the day of, it was the day of I had decided to begin the carving that things began to solidify for me to feel comfortable with it to go forward. The wood definitely has some control in all of this matter, okay? So I had to, to look at it, see all the different angles that it was presenting, to see how I would fit in what I was going to fit in, considering all these angles, okay? And um, so I, after looking and deciding on the composition, again, like I said, which was the day of, uh, I felt comfortable with what I could fit into it and, make, and, and have it make sense, okay? You know, I had to, you know, of course, picture this in my mind, how it would fit in, and, and then just call on, um, as I do, <laughs> guidance and, and my experience. It's guidance. Guidance from the tree and guidance from what I call the great ancient spirits, okay? I burned Palo Santo. Now, Palo Santo is a sacred wood exclusively from South America, okay? And medicine men from hundreds of years ago had used that wood for cleansing ceremonies and such like that. And so I do burn, burn Palo Santo beforehand. Um, also, the scent alone of Palo Santo is a calming scent, okay? So I also, you know, use it for that, for calming, because, uh, yes, I can, I can ramp up some anxiety <laughs> sometimes, okay? You have to understand, um, this car in particular, uh, it's a memorial, and I got one shot at it because the tree is still rooted in the ground in this woman's front yard, front and center. He uh, discussed it with me and we talked about it and he said it could be this, he might be able to do this, he would like to do this, and and it it's, looks like it's an evolving process. You know, you, you may have something in mind, but then, you know, if the tree doesn't work with you, you know, what are you going to do? you got to change. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to be happy with whatever I get. So, and I trust him, you know, you just, I feel like he's, he's got it in his head, in his soul, what he wants to do. And he seems to have a good passion for this, so I think it'll turn out well. And if it does, nice said, worst case scenario, we can always just cut it off and make a nice chair. <laughs> and put some carving in it. I mean, you know, I'm not going to be that upset. <laughs> when I show up, my saws are ready to go. So once I uh, fire up that chainsaw, be sure everything's operating fine, I let it idle. I'm one who believes in letting the saw warm up a little bit there. And at the same time, it gets me, we get in sync, and it, it just goes along with the groundedness in regards to what's getting ready to begin. It helps me to get to that zone. With the block out, uh, what that is, is, is it's just um, generally, it's just a general form of the creature.
once that first cut happens, then the guidance seems to take over. And then the wood just starts falling off. I start blocking it out. As I'm blocking things out, then you can actually, again, start to see whatever it is, uh, the creature or whatever I'm carving, start to come to life. Loving it, loving it. He's told me today the bear's coming out. Uh. So I'm excited. What I did was create a log <laughs> out of the stump separate from what's going to be the the tree behind it that the eagles are perched on. So I had to prep that and as I was bucking this down found a hole down in there where the crotch was growing. This tree had grown into many different crotches and found one that was down in there so I had to keep topping this thing down. I mean um, originally that hole was a good four, uh, a good foot tall from the point I bucked it down. But now I've got it down to where I'm comfortable to go into this and begin the bear. to a larger saw now, a larger bar, because I need to plunge cut through the midsection here to get the front of the bear. I think it's probably one uh, a good addition to the house and a good addition to the neighborhood. But no, it's actually turning out quite beautiful. My dad loved uh, brown bears. He was he came from California. And that was kind of his thing. Hmm. So and I think the eagles just watch over the house. The next stage, I start to break some of the hard edges with uh, you know, a grinding bit that I have, okay? I start to break some of the hard edges and start to put more form to things. I'll tell you something about nature. In nature, there's no straight lines, okay? All right? With organic nature, there's no straight line. So I like to break those edges. And just doing that, tends to give things a better feel, okay? And then at the same time as I'm doing that, I'll start to put more form to whatever it is I'm carving, okay? All right? As I'm, you know, shading the wood away with the, the, the grinding bit, at the same time, I'm not just breaking edges, but I'm also putting some form to things as well. And uh, it's, it's, so it starts to tune things up and tighten it up. And, Generally, as I do that and set the grinder down and then step back and look at it, we just keep going 
deeper and deeper and deeper toward what we're creating. Oh yeah, it's, it's on its way. It's on its way. All right, generally a creature uh, has a type of texture. So I look to use a technique to uh, tell that, okay? So I'm going in texture, whether it's putting on feathers or fur and such. Uh, I'm going in texture it. And as I'm texturing it, I also put more form to it. Because again, understand, every time you touch a tool, this is subtractive carving, Every time you touch a tool to the wood, it's removing wood. There's nothing putting wood back on, okay? All right? So even during the texturing, there's still some uh, form being put to it. You see, when I carve, what I like to do is go a little heavy uh, in the block out stage. It's a little plumper because as I'm texturing it and, and breaking the edges, I'm taking wood away. So. Uh, again, being a subtractive carving, so th things are going to become smaller and get tighter. You got to have room to texture things. You see what I mean? So then, once I get the texturing done, and then again, in a lot of cases, when the texturing is done, you could walk away from it. Then you know, people see it then, and, and you know, they're in awe. But for me, I'm like, I'm not done yet. In, the, in general, when I'm creating a creature, they have something that is of e essential for their survival. Generally, eyes, ears for hearing, a mouth, nose for breathing, okay? Uh, so I'll carve those essentials in also. And that is this place where I can get a lot of uh, emotion coming from the creature. And then that's when people say, wow, you know, that thing looks alive. I mean, I can feel it. It has so much soul, you know. That's because of the expression from some of the essential items that it has. The finishing of your project is of ultimate importance. It can make it or break it. You could have a great carving. But if you don't finish it properly, it's what I call, you could wreck it and take away from what you did, okay? And, and same thing with the other way. You could have a carving that might be mediocre, but if you finish it and accent it properly, you can enhance it and make it better. I have found on how you finish things, that's where it's really going to count. When paint, in some cases, is needed, and, and in some cases it's needed to make it more convincing. Like with the eagles I carved with Marcy, we wanted to make the distinction that they were bald eagles particularly, okay? Because there's different types of eagles, okay? Uh, if I didn't paint those, one would have had a hard time recognizing them as a bald eagle, okay? So paint was needed. What I do is I use an airbrush. There's a couple things I can do. I can keep it transparent so you can still see the wood grain underneath because I don't want to lose that. But in areas, I can also darken it to enhance it. There's different values of color and the airbrush allows me to uh, give the sculpture different values of the same color. Then I stain it. Now, I'm one who likes to use a stain that the wood likes. Wood does like linseed oil. So I use a stain that has a linseed oil component in it and pour that over it. When you do that, everything is going to come together as one. So when I stain it, it brings the whole piece together. Even though there may be different values of color in places, it brings everything together as one. So the last day, when I showed up that day, I informed her that I will be finishing the piece on that day. Marcy says, oh, great. She was excited for it, but at the same time, she didn't want to look at it. See, earlier on, as I was blocking out and such, she would come out and view it, 
Okay? I understand that. But on that last day, she deliberately did not want to view how I was going to finish the piece. She wanted it to be a surprise. I believe part of her nerve had her too, where she didn't want to see it. You know, it was just, it was just a lot for her. Okay? So she deliberately had a closed eye to it all until um, I was able to give her the signal that it was completed and ready to be, quote, unveiled to her. Okay, I'm going to come out to the garage so I don't see it so I get out there. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bless it. I did the best I could. <laughs> May he appreciate it. I did the best I could. All right. May he appreciate it. <gasps> oh my God. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, I'm going to cry. My did well. It's my interpretation of what he would enjoy. Yes. Okay? Oh, I did the best I could. Okay? I think it was a little more than she was expecting. Okay? Because actually on the last day, the piece took a big change. I told you how it is with the finishing part. Okay, you can really turn it into something that one wouldn't have figured. She got very emotional. It hit her in a positive way, but it, it brought tears of goodness, as you want to say. You did it. No, you did it. But you dug. But you dug. You had the vision, and you dug, and you never let it go. Mm -hmm. That's true.